of Helen Fraser. That's right. Okay. Um, and we're going to ask you a few questions, Helen, and just answer them, whatever you're thinking. Okay. So before, before the turbines, what was your opinion of wind energy? I thought it was great. I mean, we grew up on, my husband and I both grew up on a farm. We had windmills to, you know, water for the cattle and, and that type of thing. But didn't realize the magnitude of what was coming into us. Um, even when they were being put up, I thought they were, they were great. And we were fascinated by the um, production, you know, of putting these turbines up. So I'm all for green. We recycle more than we, and compost more than we garbage. And... Um, so, I thought they were going to be a good thing for the environment. Okay. Um, describe your life before at, and after the turbines, such as uh, how were the turbines sited, how far away, and how big were they in relationship to your home before you had to sell it? Okay. Uh, life before. We built our own home on an acre lot. We were there for 32 years, actually 31 before the turbines moved in. Uh, we raised four kids out there. We had an uh, area for them to play. We had a pool for them to swim in. Uh, we could enjoy our back deck. Loved the country. We were both raised in the country and that's where we wanted to be. So after they moved in, that's a different story. Uh, we watched them being built. We were fascinated with them being built. Um, thought they were going to be great. And then they were turned on. And then our life completely changed. We had uh, um, I started getting health issues. Um, didn't realize that it was coming from the turbines at the time that uh, the health issues started, but headaches, uh, ringing in ears, body aches, not being able to sleep. Um, I had fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue, so I thought maybe it was a major flare-up of those types of things until we went away on holidays, and every symptom cleared up within less than 24 hours come home from holidays and within 24 hours all the symptoms were back again. And then uh, we left again for three weeks, symptoms totally cleared up again and came back within 24 hours the symptoms were back. So obviously turbines were, were the issue. And I could tell in the morning before I ever got out of bed whether the turbine was running or not by the way my body reacted and whether I had a headache. Or not. So if I had a headache, I knew that the turbine was running. If I had such severe body pain that I didn't want to move, I knew which way the blades were facing. That was even before I opened the blackout curtains on the bedroom. So that's how severe uh, it was. Other issues when the turbines were running was I would get heart palpitations. I would have the turbines when they run People think they don't make a noise, and they do. And they will, every two seconds, the blade will go past the tower. So when it goes past the tower, you get a whooshing sound with it. It'll go whoosh, 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 and that's what you're hearing. And my heart will actually beat, would actually beat to the, the pulse of the turbine. So that was another health issue. Uh, another one was going to the washroom more frequently. So it bothered the whole digestive system. If the blades were facing directly towards the house, then I just wrote the day off, which meant literally I stayed in bed and did nothing. Um, if I tried to work on the computer, I couldn't concentrate. So trying to write a simple sentence as, um, where do we go from here in an email, there were times it was, how do I spell the word where, you know, like, or I'd be lost in mid-sentence. I'd get halfway through a sentence, and I'd be lost in that sentence. So the whole concentration thing was gone. And that was the blades facing directly towards us. When they faced on an angle, so the house here, the blades facing kind of perpendicular, like this way on an angle. Um, again, I didn't sleep at night. The dog was up and down. Um, I was up and down. So it was just, you'd write the night off as far as sleeping goes. And I could guarantee that nine times out of ten before I ever got out of bed, I would know I would have to clean up a spot where she had wet on the floor. Just from anxiety of the turbines. Since we moved here, nothing. I have never had to clean anything up from her. I don't have the headaches. 
I don't have the body aches, I don't have the ringing in the ears. I thought it was something wrong. I even had to go and have my hearing checked because I thought there was something wrong with my ears. I'd get an itching, like something was crawling in my ears. And since I come, we come to town, I don't have that anymore. So major, major health um, issues with, with me. Uh, my husband had diabetes or has diabetes and his blood sugars would be all over the map when we were out there. Now they're settled down more to a consistent uh, level. So that was another thing. We couldn't entertain friends on our back deck because of the noise. Um, some people commented it sounded like a train. Some commented it sounded like an airplane. Some was the ocean. And I'd, I'd say to them, listen to it. Just stop and listen. And when they listened, they were like, how do you stay here? Because there was a constant beat to it. you know, And it gets in your system like it's somebody you know how you're sitting there and somebody's tapping their finger on a table and you just want it to stop and it doesn't stop and they won't stop? That's the way the turbines get in, would get into your system because every two seconds it would make a revolution. And you get that in your head and it's just like, shut it off, you know, and a radio and a TV and anything like that, you can shut off. If a light's bothering you, you can shut it off, but you can't shut off a wind turbine. So. It was constantly there. Um, when the top of the turbine rotates, because it rotates with the wind, when it rotates, you'll almost get, um, there's sometimes you'll get like a gunshot sound. And you'll, you'll think, oh, where's that coming from? And we finally clued in that it wasn't hunters in the area, because we're always like fearful for the dog. It wasn't hunters in the area, it was actually the, the turbine head moving or you get a sound like a, a foghorn or a whistle. So you have all these other noises invading your space besides just the noise from the, uh, from the turbine then. Um, it just made our life a living hell. Uh, one other thing too before I go on was the shadowing effect. In doing research, World War II did, had torture using shadows using lights and shadows. And the Ministry of Environment said 30 hours of shadowing was acceptable. Now shadowing is when the sun's behind the, the blade, so the blade's actually rotating in front of the sun, giving you a shadowing effect on your property. And then you get an afternoon shadowing when the sun sets, or if the moon happens to get behind the blades, you'll get a nighttime effect. The daytime shadowing would build up such a pressure in my head that I thought the top was going to blow off my head. And there'd be days that it would shadow anywhere from 10 to 45 minutes in a day. And I would go to the basement, the dog would beat me to the basement, but you still can't get away from it. It seeps in every window that you have because they're, they're huge. They're 350 feet from base to the tip of the uh, of your blade. so. You, you can't block that out off your property. If you went, if they were, the turbine was at the back of the house and you went to the front of the house, you still get the shadowing effect. So with me, it built up the pressure in my head, caused me to feel sick to my stomach. I often, there were times that I'd be sitting like this and there'd be tears running out of my eyes and they were involuntary because the pain was so bad. And there were times that we, we just got in the car and left until we knew that shadowing would be passed. Um, nighttime, it made an eerie feeling, you know, because you have a dark shadow moving over your property all the time. And it's like, you know, kind of a, a, a spooky, but it would be an anxious feeling. And you couldn't help it because it's like, you know, is there something out there? And, you, and we could be sitting relaxed in the living room, and even with that dark shadowing, and we knew what it was, you still got that easy, uneasy feeling because you had that darkness invading your space. Every two seconds you'd get that. So those were some of the effects that we felt from the, from the turbines. Um, I don't want to say that they're a bad thing. I want to say that there's a place for them. And the place for them is not near people at all. How far away is the, the, the closest turbine to where you, we're living? The closest one to where we were living were four, was 423 meters from our back door. 
and then we had them in kind of a capital C shape around us. So there were four on the farm back of us, or the property back of us, there were four there in kind of the, the bottom of the C, and then they would, they would kind of be around in a C shape around us. So we would get some from both sides of us, and then to the, I would wanted to call it more to the west side, the northwest side. So we would have basically out of about 12 that we could see, we would have about eight of them that we could get effects from. But the closest one that caused all the problems, that I want to say caused all the problems, was 423 meters. Did you turn to anybody to try and get some help or some oh, support? Oh yes. We went to uh, the township, which basically laughed in our faces um, and said, there's nothing to it, you know, you're fine. We wrote letters to the township, which were never filed as a complaint. Uh, because newspaper articles kept saying there were no complaints with the uh, filed before the township. So then I actually photocopied them all again, took them back to the township, asked them to be read and filed as a complaint. We went to the turbine company. They had talked to them about the excessive noise. They had an engineer come and put a sound meter, two sound meters on our property. Uh, the engineer came to the door and said, yes, you do have excessive noise on your property. So the turbine was shut down for about three weeks. Some work was done on it, started back up again, and they never come back to put a sound meter on it again. Even though we asked, they didn't come back to put a sound meter on. We went to the Ministry of Environment. I went to our um, provincial government. Um, you name it, if there was an avenue to follow it, I followed. And basically no results from it at all. Um, the council turned their back on me. They wouldn't even interpret their bylaws for me. So as far as the distance goes uh, from the property or from the house. Um, so we, we tried everything. Basically, like we were at the end of our rope because we did not know where else to go. And because phase one was Melanchthon and we were in phase one, was new, it wasn't, um, we didn't have anyone else really to fall back on, you know, as if we were the guinea pigs. So uh, my doctor was, I was going to my family doctor, I was going to a natural path, as far as my health issues go, I was going to another specialist, and they were all coming back to, you know, these were your symptoms before the turbines, these were your symptoms during the turbines, these were your symptoms after the turbines. So for me, I was seeking every possible um, avenue, you know, to, to say, okay, am I the one that's nuts? You know, is, am I reading into this? Or is there actually something going on? And, um, Shelby. And it was just, uh, it was a losing battle. Just a losing battle, so. Well, these turbines, how old are they? How long have they been here? They started up March 2006, the, the okay. phase one. Now we have phase two now that they're just finishing up this month. And uh, so phase one had 45, has 45 in it. Phase two has 66 in Melanchthon. And another, I think, believe it, 11 or 13, one or the other, in Amaranth. So it took them probably close to a year to complete the building of Phase 1. And so they, would, they started in, in uh, 2005, and they started up March 2006. And if somebody asked you about wind towers now, what would you say to them? What, what, what would you... Uh respond to them and say that uh, still believe that the wind energy is green and harmless and how would you respond to that type of reply? If someone said to me that wind ener energy was green and harmless, I would tell them to go and do their research. Go and talk to somebody that's experienced um, health issues. It's not just me that's experiencing these health issues. Three men in Godridge have had strokes because of the wind turbines. Um, one fellow has had to move out of his house. Um, several 
four or five properties in phase one, around phase one, have left because of the, the wind turbines and what it's doing to their body. One family had four little children, none of them were sleeping. So my thing is, council, please step back and take a look at what you're going to do to your residents in your area before you ever bring these in. When they came into our township, they came at a hard time. Farming was tough, prices were bad, the wing company made it to believe that it was going to be a good revenue for them. Uh, $1,500 just to put your name on, on the paper that there could be a possible chance that you would allow a wind turbine on your farm. So 1500 times 4 or times 7, whatever you had on the farm, that was a little bit of money right then and there. Then they would say you'll get so much, 2.2% from whatever energy is produced from the wind turbine. So they thought that was going to be another income there. So basically they made it look like uh, a gift to the farmers. And it's not a gift to anyone uh, with the effects of the turbines there. They took up A1 agricultural land. Um, they were built near residents who did not have any say at all, like us with an acre lot, and, and there's about six houses around us, with, which were all like small acreages. So we never had a say in that. So go and do your research. There is a new book coming out within the next two months. It's called um, Wind Turbine Syndrome. Look at that book. There's tons and tons of information that's going to be in it. Listen to people who have lived near them who have had the ill effects. And don't go making snap decisions on the fact that the township may be getting money or that they may be doing a new thing that's coming into the area by bringing wind power in. Um, because believe it or not, us living there for the year and a half that we lived there was pure torture. Um, that's all I can say. Like we lost, basically, we moved from an area that we loved and was close to our heart. And now we're in the house that we've had to, um, we've had to start from scratch again. So we, like I feel it took a big chunk of my heart, you know, leaving that property the way we had to leave because we weren't ready. But the only way of surviving was to get out. So what I would say to everyone is do your research. Don't listen to the wind company that's coming in that makes it sound like it's a glory thing because it's not a glory thing. When they're being built, we had 400 gravel trucks a day go past our property. That's 200 full, 200 empty. empty. So not only did we get the pollution from the turbines afterwards, we had all the traffic and the inconvenience beforehand. So it's a total invasion on your life once they move in. And take a look at the setbacks. Make certain that they're not near where people are going to be. Go and put them in a field of rock or go and put them in a swamp where no one's going to live. Like, look at where they're going to be placed because your people are the most important thing that you have in the township or that you have in your area. And you have to listen to them and you want to, basically you don't want to torture them, you know, and that's what we were. So that would be my message, I guess, if I wanted to say it in a If you had the, op heart. Oops, sorry. If you had the opportunity to speak to our council, what would your message be to our council? step back and go around to some of these other places that already have the wind turbines and see the effect that it's having on on the people on the residences there see the effect that it's having on the wildlife uh, we used to have deer all the time around our place and we, we lost the deer um, they say that it doesn't affect the animal population, but we, we lost a lot of animals around that we used to have there. You also have to consider the safety factors in it. Not just what it's doing to the people at the time, 
but you have to look at there could be other issues. And doing our, my own research, the electrical energy that's coming from these things is way more than what the turbine company will ever lead you to believe that's there. You have stray voltage that's actually caused uh, miscarriages in cattle, it's actually caused nosebleeds in cattle, it's actually stopped people from having their um, menstrual cycles. Uh, it's done all the damage that it did with my health. Um, so step back, take a look, see if what they're getting out of it is worth what they would be doing to the residents. So I guess that would be my um, my most important message.